Welcome to Red Tastic. Story 1 Hello everyone, I need your judgment on a situation causing significant tension in my family. I'll do my best to explain the whole situation. So here's the deal. I, 23 female, have my childhood room, which I still use whenever I visit my dad, 53 male, and brother, 27 male, on weekends. However, things took a turn when my brother's pregnant girlfriend, 22 female, let's call her Monica, moved in with them. They merged my room with my brother's to make more space for Monica. But folks, that is just a part of it. Monica has always been demanding, and without even discussing it with me, she took it upon herself to move my belongings to the storage room. She did this with the help of my dad and brother. None even thought it was necessary to inform me or ask for my consent before merging the room. This upset me greatly because my room held much sentimental value for me. I had posters and beautiful decorations that I cherished. It was my sanctuary. Filled with memories of my childhood and teenage years, all of which were gone now. To make matters worse, Monica even started using my personal belongings, like my makeup kit, without my permission. This invasion of my privacy and disregard for my feelings made me even angrier. I couldn't fathom why they thought it was okay to treat me this way. I was furious when I found out what had happened. So in response, I requested that they let me move to the guest room. It would be a fair compromise considering the circumstances, but both Monica and my brother disagreed. They wanted to convert the guest room into a nursery for the baby, so they didn't want me to stay there. I understood their desire to prepare for the baby's arrival, but I couldn't help but feel that my needs and feelings were utterly disregarded. Maybe I'm being spoiled. Now, I had no choice but to convert the tiny storage room into my makeshift bedroom. It was cramped, lacked proper ventilation, and didn't even have a proper bed. I would have to sleep on a mattress or a sleeping bag, sacrificing my comfort to accommodate Monica's needs. It wasn't ideal, but I planned to make it work since I only visited on weekends. However, Monica and my brother have taken things to the extreme. They want me to pay rent to keep my stuff in the storage room, which I will also have to use as my bedroom on weekends. They want me to pay for my room, and get this, she expects me to pay the same amount as a standard one-bedroom rent in the area. Her reasoning is that she needs to complete the nursery quickly, but doesn't have the money. Like how is that even my concern? You can probably guess my reaction. I flat out refused to pay her rent. I already have my apartment where I pay rent. And I'm only coming home to see my dad. It's worth mentioning that my mom passed away a few years ago, so my dad is lonely. So now I've decided to move out and find an alternative means for my belongings. When I explained my situation to dad, he was sad but understanding. He understood that I had already made sacrifices and shouldn't have to pay for the consequences of Monica's actions. However, Monica and my brother threw a huge fit, saying that I couldn't move my things out because they needed the money. They accused me of being selfish and insensitive. This has caused much tension in our family, with emotions running high on all sides. I never wanted things to come to this, but I wonder if I might be the a-hole here. I didn't ask for my room to be merged or my belongings to be disrespected. I just wanted a fair solution that considered everyone's needs. Now I'm faced with a difficult decision to move things out and distance myself from this toxic environment. So tell me, am I the a-hole for refusing to pay rent for the storage room and wanting to move my things out? I need your honest judgment to help me endure this complicated family dynamic. Update. Thank you all for your tremendous support. Here is an update on my situation. I finally moved out. But a few days ago, my brother called me asking that I lend him some money as Monica's demands are becoming more unreasonable. And my brother doesn't have a stable job to continue fulfilling her desires. Now he wants me to help him out as he has no money. I just told him to find an alternative, as I wasn't ready to make any more sacrifices for Monica again. You're not the a-hole, OP. Your brother and Monica are big a-holes, though. The room was yours. The least they could have done when they wanted to make it theirs was consult you first. The fact that they are mad at you for refusing to pay rent for a storage room is ridiculous. Of course, you don't want to pay that much rent for a storage room. I understand that they are preparing for a baby, but they are asking for way too much from you and you're not the a-hole for refusing. 
Story 2 I, 22 female, am bisexual. This is known by everyone in my friend group consisting of several people in their 20s. Most of them men. One of these people is John, 23 male. We have known each other for two years. My understanding of him was that he has good intentions, but he's a traditionalist because of the way he grew up. We all live in the same dormitory, so we're fairly close. John and I had some arguments before, but none of them were big or anything. The thing is, for like a year, he has been making some stupid comments in an effort to trigger me. I guess he finds it funny. I repeatedly asked him to stop doing this, explained why it was important to me and why it affected me so much. He continued to do it. Well, a week ago, we were all having fun somewhere, drinking and all. I don't know how it happened, but the topic came to gay people and John said, I respect the transvestites, but I just don't like the gays, in this annoying tone, like he knew I wouldn't like the comment and he was enjoying that fact. I said I knew he was doing this to get a rise out of me, but it was part of my personality and I had asked him to not say shit like that before, and I would honestly leave if he continued. He continued. So I picked my stuff, told everyone to have a nice evening and left. I kind of cried afterwards because I took this kind of shit from everyone in my life most importantly my family, and he knows about it. And all I was thinking when I was going back to my dorm was that I didn't have to take this shit from anyone. And honestly, I don't want him to be my friend anymore. Because there is just no respect. Like if he actually believes the shit he says, then he already doesn't respect me. But if he only does it to trigger me when I've repeatedly asked him to stop, that again means he has no respect for me. Anyways, I talked to two other people from the group. One is Mary, 22 female. She finds me 100% right. And previously decided to distance herself from the group for a bit because she had a similar issue with John. And the other is Sam, 23 male, who said these kind of stuff should be resolved. And leaving just makes it worse and implied John thinks I'm an a-hole for leaving the table. I told him I think there is nothing to resolve. If I thought so, I would try to explain myself which I did for a year. I never left her anything like that before. This was just the last strike. I thought about it and honestly don't know if what I did was wrong. Maybe I overreacted. Am I the a-hole? OP, John is clearly an a-hole and a bigot, and you're under no obligation to spend time with someone like that. Given the fact that you previously asked him not to make comments that are racist or bigoted, and he seems to get a kick out of doing it. I would say walking out was an entirely appropriate response. I would also have to wonder about your other friends who seem willing to let that shit slide if they're not pushing back against those comments. They're part of the problem. Now for some comments. OMG, he thinks you overreacted. Hell no, you just got up and left. You didn't even raise your voice. You deserve to be around people who show you respect. This person continually acts like an ass and everyone else is enabling his homophobic behavior. Bullshit. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. This guy sounds effing insufferable. You absolutely did not overreact in all honesty. I would have had it with him way before now. There are so many better things to do than spend time with the kind of people who think being edgy, ignoring boundaries and triggering people is funny or a personality trait. Not the a-hole, John clearly doesn't care about what you think or feel. I would go as far as to say that he's bullying you because of your sexual orientation. And it was absolutely fine for you to walk away. You don't have to sit there and listen to someone tear you down for something as non-offensive as your sexual orientation. If your departure made the situation uncomfortable, that's good. He created it. He can stew in it. Story 3. My sister and her husband have three sons and they are very particular in everything from how their boys look to what games they play. They are very into, this is what a boy does and this is how a boy looks, and this is what a girl does and this is how a girl looks. I have a much more relaxed parenting style. My oldest is a tomboy who would rather be playing football than doing her makeup, and my son has long hair. My younger two girls, though, are very girly and love playing dress up and having tea parties. I was recently watching my nephews so they could have a day to relax for their anniversary. So my girls decided to host a tea party. In deference to my sister and brother-in-law's wishes, I told my nephews that they couldn't dress up. But I saw no problem with them joining the tea party if they wished to. My sister found out that they had played tea party with my girls and called me outraged about it. 
She was angry that I had let them act like girls and told me that I was disrespecting their parenting style. I told her that boys drink tea too and that one tea party isn't going to hurt them. She then called me some unsavory names and told me I was trying to turn them into sissies just like my son. I got angry back and called her a witch, only not so nice, and she informed me that I was no longer allowed to see my nephews because she wasn't going to let me turn them into sissy boys. After I calmed down, I began to think that I may actually be the a-hole here and that I may have disrespected her parenting style by letting them play tea party. Am I the a-hole? Now for some comments. Not the a-hole. Men from all social standings drink tea. Would it have been different if you called it a coffee chat? My husband and son are masculine, but when my daughter asks for a tea party, we all show up. Hell, when my kids are done with school for the day, we all gather in the kitchen for a cup and treats just so we can chat. Not the a-hole. What does it even mean to act like a girl? Seems to me your nephews were very kindly playing with their cousins and obeying the rules of the game. If your sister and brother-in-law feel so very strongly about that kind of thing, it looks like they better never have a babysitter. You did a favor for them and they got pissy like this? No. Also, what does it mean to be a sissy? Sounds like they think men who like things that have been traditionally considered feminine inferior, which really means they think women are inferior. That's a gross line of thought. Not the a-hole, some fragile dream she lives where she can mold her children into who she wants them to be is not reality where they can be happy. My husband takes me out to tea every so often. He sits and eats scones and sips tea like a fancy gentleman. He is a muscled military man who has done more than a few tours and survived things I can't stand to hear him talk about. He has the kindest heart I have found next to my dad. When a kitty of ours has an upset tummy or is being grumpy, he's so gentle and caring. He dresses up with me at Disneyland and loves fishing and camping too. Men can be diverse, multifaceted beings just like women, though I can't say your sister feels that way.